The idea for this initiative came from a conversation that happened way back in 2013. I met with Ken Feith and Andrea Blackman to discuss the audiovisual media that comes into the library through their departments. Reel-to-reel film, uh, video recordings in all formats, audio recordings in all formats. Um, and all of this media needed to be addressed. And it takes time, it takes staff, uh, and it takes a special set of skills to appraise and process audiovisual media. So fast forward to 2016, and the Audiovisual Conservation Initiative uh, has now been underway for six months. And we've decided to focus on the Metro Archives collection uh, in the first phase. We need to do something with these things very quickly. Uh, the older the format, the harder it is to find equipment that'll run it. Um, there are few places, houses in the United States that can handle things like two inch broadcast tapes. And so we don't know what's on it. And so it's very important to figure out what's on there. So these kind of things need to be done quickly. The Metro Archives collection is housed at a storage facility on Elm Hill Pike. Ken Feith began building the media collection in 1994 and it now equates to approximately 4,400 pieces of film, video, and audio media. To properly appraise the collection, we needed expertise and guidance and were fortunate to find local audiovisual archivist Kelly Hicks. Kelly was brought on board to facilitate the process of discovery. This included a detailed overview of the inventory and recommendations for future care of the media. From the beginning of this discovery process, we were all in agreement that the first objective was to relocate the collection. There are two primary reasons for this. The first being, Metro Archives will no longer be using the Elm Hill Pike facility for storage. This is absolutely the perfect time because we've got to move out of this building. And so moving out of here is going to be some of the impetus to pull out those collections and start the conservation process. The collection also needed to be moved to a more stable environment. The media is in a constant state of degradation. The only way to slow this process down is to house it in a controlled working environment as opposed to a storage facility. In short, the collection needs to be in a place where it can be cared for. And this is an example of um, what happens in environmental conditions that aren't perfect, which is this mold growth. All of this white powder here is mold. Not only does that cause decay in the film because it's, it's mold actually eating the organic materials in the magnetic media. So not only is that dangerous to the film, but it's dangerous to people as well. It can be cleaned and sometimes it can be recovered, but um, you want to avoid this at all costs and great storage conditions can, can help to do that. Our ultimate goal is to relocate the entire collection to the main downtown branch. But storage is in high demand and this will take some time and planning. That being the case, we decided the collection of film was most in danger and our top priority. Thankfully, Ken was able to make just enough room for the film collection in the archive storage area on the third floor. So in October, we loaded up the film and officially began the process of relocation. With this initial process of discovery completed, it was time to do some homework. We needed to see how other conservation-based institutions function and process their AV collections. So in December, we were able to travel to Washington, D.C. and visit the Smithsonian Institution, the National Archives, and the Library of Congress. Our first stop was the Smithsonian Institution, where we were able to meet with Jennifer Snyder and Marissa Bourgoin. We discussed the AV components of their oral history program and how they make their digital files available to the public. Before leaving, Megan McShay walked us through her AV transfer system, appropriately named the Time Machine. Our next visit was to the National Archives. Motion picture specialist Chris Kovac walked us through their incredible processing facilities, which included a tour of their video lab with Courtney Egan. In their film lab, they were processing the 8mm home movie collections of Presidents Hoover and Eisenhower, which was a highlight of the day. Our last stop was the Library of Congress Audiovisual Conservation Center in Culpeper, Virginia. Paul Klamer oversees the video lab and showed us how video media of all types is processed on a massive scale. 
Racks and racks of equipment, including robots, are in constant use processing video collections from all over the nation. Before leaving, we were able to meet with Head of Moving Images, Mike Michon, and took a walk through their film preservation lab where we were able to witness the restoration process of a 35 millimeter film. The value with places like uh, National Public Library is they're collecting more locally. That's not the kind of thing that we focus on here at the Library of Congress, so we're, we're always very, very interested in knowing more about those local collections and in ways, frankly, in which we can help them preserve their own local history. And certainly, Nashville has got a lot of history. One particular piece of media stands out from the rest of the Metro Archives collection. This is a 35 millimeter film from the 1933 Nashville tornado. This is the only known film footage of the tornado aftermath in existence, making it extremely rare. The film is made of nitrate and is highly flammable. By law, it must be stored under specific guidelines. We were particularly interested to know that the Nashville Public Library has a reel of nitrate uh, in their collection, uh, and we'd be delighted uh, to be the home uh, for that reel. Uh, and once the film is preserved, we'd even be happy to store uh, whatever 35 millimeter elements are uh, produced as part of that preservation. Uh, but we're particularly uh, interested in serving as home for that nitrate reel because of the special environmental conditions that we can provide here. With this initiative well underway, here are the next steps. Secure additional storage space and relocate the remainder of the collection to the downtown library. Secure the staff and equipment needed to begin processing and digitizing portions of the collection in-house. To begin a digital access discovery process, gathering information and looking into all options for providing our digitized materials to the public. You know, somebody at some point in time, picked up a camera and decided to uh, capture Martin Luther King at Fisk University, or Lyndon Johnson uh, when he came to visit Nashville at the airport in 64, um, and on and on and on. Nashville's history is on this media, and the media makes our history come to life.